Friday with a video that's definitely not so happy. <laughs> All right, so this video is going to be quite different than the sorts of videos that we normally do. Uh, one reason, because it's going to be in two parts. I have tried to tell this video story in one video and not really been able to do it. It's just too long. So I'm splitting it up into two parts. Uh, the second is, it's about a dog. Okay, so you know our channel isn't A, about dogs, and B, about like our life in specific. We don't do those sorts of videos. Our videos are about Panama. So the reason that this video is so important is because what I really want to highlight, number one, how difficult it is to get to a vet if you're where I am. So if you have pets and like uh, premium vet care is one of your priorities, you really need to think about that before you get into a situation <laughs> uh, so, and kind of plan ahead of time. Uh, number two, because it is about the community within Panama that came together to help us through all of this by us, me, Brian, and Selva. People that I already knew and people I had never met some of which I still have never met, that really came together and pulled through for a stranger they didn't know from Adam and helped us in a very dire situation. So that's what this Friday and next Friday's video are gonna be about. They're going to be about Selva the Jungle Dog's story because she had quite the adventure in her first like 10 to 11 weeks of life quite the adventure indeed. Uh, so we're going to lay all that out. I'm going to tell you everything that happened. That's going to explain precisely why we did not do videos for about six weeks because I was embroiled in all of this stuff. And other than that, I'm going to say a few things. Number one, below is a link for an organization called Dog Camp Boquete. I highly recommend that if you have a heart for rescue animals, that you donate to them. All of that information is linked below. And if any video I have ever made has ever informed you, entertained you, um, offended you, if you're the type that loves to be offended every day and I did that for you, um, if you're any of those people, I ask, please, even if it's a dollar, give something to Dog Camp Boquete, and you'll see why as this story unfolds over the next two weeks. And make sure when you do that you put a little note in there about Selva. All right, the other thing, as always, make sure you click subscribe. Make sure you hit the notification bell. That way you will get a little YouTube notification every time we post a video because they're not always on Friday. Sometimes we have breaking news. And the very last thing before we get into today's story is if you want to talk about this or any other topic related to Panama, make sure you join our I Go Panama Facebook group. Uh, as of now, there's about 1,900 of us over there answering questions and discussing all sorts of things about Panama. So come on over and join us. All right, are you ready? Let's get into Selva's story. Well, this isn't a video that I was expecting to post this week, but I don't have a choice. Um, Last week, I introduced you to brand new puppy, Jungle Dog Selva, and that we got her on Wednesday. Well, over the weekend, she started getting sick, and I think she has kennel cough, um, so she's been coughing, she's not been as playful, not eating as much, but she is still eating and drinking and uh, walking a little bit, but she slept most of yesterday. Her coughing got worse last night. And like yesterday was Sunday, today's Monday. Um, and I was freaking out because she was so listless and so lethargic. And we're in the middle of the jungle and we don't have a lot of options for vet care. So no one is open on Sunday. I mean, if your dog gets sick on Sunday, I guess you're just kind of screwed. And I have to say that this is the one thing I have learned that I don't like about where we live. Like literally the only thing I have found that I don't like about where we live. Uh, Jungle Dog Ike, a few weeks ago, sorry. 
this is another <laughs> this is something we encounter sometimes okay uh, our roads washing out uh, to Almirante all right so jungle dog I hurt his foot a few weeks ago and he was limping around and it was at night when he hurt his foot and I mean he was in a lot of pain and so I'm on the Facebook groups for Boca saying what can I do what can I do like is there a vet blah 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 like <sighs> It's a whole process trying to get them to book us. And like, if it happens at night, again, you're screwed. If something really bad had happened to him, uh, you know, I come from Los Angeles where like when my animals would be injured or hurt and it was after normal vet hours, within a few miles of you, there's a 24 hour vet emergency clinic. And so it's really hard coming here and your animals are sick or, you're, or they're hurt and then you're just kind of stuck. Like, because to get this dog to Bocas, you're gonna see everything we have to go through just to get him to Bocas. Um, we could go to Changinola, but I don't think that the vet there, I think they probably only speak Spanish. And when I'm trying to, do, like, I can get by on Spanish, like for normal things, but trying to describe illnesses and things like that, my Spanish is just not good enough. And, and that's not somewhere where you wanna miss communication at all. So we do know that Boca's Vet Clinic, uh, Dr. Gloria, speaks English. So I'm going to be able to go there and explain to her what's going on with the dog. So we are leaving at 8.06. The vet clinic opens at 9. And you're going to see what we have to do to get little baby Selva to the vet. Okay, so 20 minute car ride from our place to Almirante, where now we have to catch a water taxi to go to Bocas. Uh, there is a car taxi strike nationwide today, which is another reason why we didn't try to go to Changinola because there's a good chance that they'll have the roads blocked. Um, so off we go to Bocas Town. And we're off on Baby Selva's first boat ride with her little snotty nose. So we're leaving Almirante now. And now we have arrived in Bogus for our next adventure. Okay, so here's the deal. Like I said, there's a taxi strike today. So we don't know anyone on East Lake Cologne that has a vehicle, but Brian goes to the fight club, or the fight gym, I guess it is. Um, and so he sent a message out to all of the guys at the fight gym. And they found somebody who's willing to pick us up and take us because the vet clinic is a little over two miles from where the water taxi drops us off. And with her being sick, we didn't want to walk, um, you know, almost five miles round trip with her. So someone is kindly picking us up here to take us to the Focus Vet Clinic. I don't think she's impressed. No. What do you think about your first boat ride, baby Selba? It's the first of many, my dear. Got to be a boat dog if you live in Bocas. All right, so this is Eris, who has been kind enough to pick us up and take us to the vet clinic in his awesome golf cart thing. I mean, this is so cool. So baby Selva has had a car ride, a boat ride, and now a golf cart ride. She's been busy today for a little sick puppy. All right, we have arrived at Boca's vet clinic, thanks to Eris and his awesome You're golf cart. Welcome. He's gonna wait for us so he can take us back too. So they said that we don't have to have an appointment, but there's a sign on here that's open. There's a sign on here that's closed. I don't know. The door's open. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Okay, oh, what a cute little place. Very different than like your strip mall vets in the US. I like it. Okay, so in we go and we'll see what they have to say. Okay, so I did WhatsApp them before we arrived and they said we did not need an appointment, which is nice. They're open from nine to one. Um, we have to espere outside. Uh, so she came out and said it'll be just a minute and then hopefully we can get this little snotty nosed girl taken care of. And this is where things completely change. So there is no more video of that day's trip. Let me tell you why. All right, so we go to the vet, uh, vet clinic. Obviously, you just saw that. Um, we could only have one person in the vet at a time, so I took Selva in. 
I set her on the table. You can see from the previous video that I shot that she was very listless. Her eyes were very dull. She had a very snotty nose. She just did not feel well and it was very obvious. Um, set her on the table. I uh, told the vet, who I thought was Dr. Gloria, but was not Dr. Gloria. <laughs> um, and I only thought that because, oh, we'll get into it. I, like I said, this is a story. Okay, so, um, I think I hear rain coming. If I cut this off, it's because I'm getting rained on again. Uh, all right, so I'm in the vet. I put Salva on the table. I explain all of the symptoms to the lady, who I still don't know her name. Um and said, I think she has kennel cough. And I had pretty good reason to believe that because I had been in the pet industry for 25 years of my life. Now, most of that was fish, but early on in, in my pet industry career, I was working with like full range of domestic type pets. I even owned a pet store back in the early 90s. So I was very aware of kennel cough and the symptoms of that and how common it is. So I thought, I literally thought we're walking in here, we're gonna get a diagnosis of kennel cough, we're gonna get some antibiotics, we're gonna leave and we're gonna be done. Well, the vet person said she wanted to do a distemper test. Okay, so she pulls out a little thing and I'm going to describe it kind of like a pregnancy test. It's where you put the liquid on and the liquid runs across the slide and then there are two different lines. One's a control line that is always going to show up. And then the second line is the, you know, pregnancy line. So if you're pregnant, it's gonna show up. If you're not, it's not gonna show up. Well, the distemper test was kind of the same thing. Um, what they did was they took a sample from her eye because her eyes were very runny. They took a sample from her nose, which was very snotty. Um, and then they mixed it and put it on that slide and let it run. Well, as soon as they put it on there, I mean, like immediately that first line popped up and I saw that second line pop up and my head is going, Oh, what's happening here? And the vet person said, Selva has distemper. Okay. I've heard of distemper. Like I said, I've been in the pet industry for forever. And I know that distemper is one of those diseases that you get a vaccination for your pets for just like parvo and rabies. Uh, but I didn't really know what distemper was. It's kind of like when you get your kids their vaccinations and you have to get the MMR, the measles, mumps, rubella. Like who the heck knows what rubella is? You know you get vaccinated for it, but I mean, if you ask me to describe the symptoms and the cure for rubella, I have no idea. Same with distemper. So she tells me that Salva has just tested positive for distemper. And I'm like, okay, what do we have to do to fix this? At which point she tells me there is no cure for distemper. It's a viral disease. First, it presents as respiratory infection, which was what we were currently seeing. That's with all the coughing and the runny nose and all of that. And then once the respiratory infection part goes through, it then enters a new phase, which is the neurological symptoms. And that the neurological symptoms are what basically kill the dogs. Um, the virus attacks their brain, and if they do survive it, they have neurological disorders for the rest of their life from it, because once you um, damage that tissue, it, it doesn't come back. I'm standing there by myself with my very listless puppy on the table, just in shock, and she basically tells me that when you're dealing with older dogs, it's very hard for them to get through distemper. And again, if they do get through it, they come out of it generally with severe neurological disorders. But for puppies, it's even worse because they don't have the immune system they need to be able to fight it. And I'm just gobsmacked. I couldn't even believe it. I have tears running down my face. So I'm like, so there's nothing we can do. She's like, no, you just have to take her home and see how she does. So we went home, we got, we got some wet food. Well, before we went home, we got some wet food and then some supplements that the vet recommended like a respiratory type supplement. Um, and then like an appetite stimulant type supplement, uh, and, 
yeah. So I walk out, I'm crying. Brian is like, what's wrong? I explained to him that she has distemper and that there is no cure. And I still really didn't know what we were dealing with other than it was extremely serious. So come back in um, Iris's golf cart and then back onto the water taxi to Almirante, get back in the truck and get home. Completely distraught. Um, get home and start researching distemper and it's bad news. Puppies, 80, over 80% 80 of them die. So, I mean, you have to have a really strong puppy to get through all of this. And I knew we did not. Um, people here in Panama with puppies, they pull them from their mothers really early. I was pretty excited because I was getting Selva at seven and a half weeks where every other puppy I had come across was five and six weeks. Uh, but it was pretty apparent to us that she had been pulled from her mother a lot earlier than seven and a half weeks. So I'm guessing probably around six. So it's just not enough time for them to get an immune system built up from their mother's milk. <sighs> researching on the internet, researching on the internet. It's terrible. So now I go into, we have to find a cure for this. Someone in the world must be doing something for puppies with distemper. I find a vet in Mexico of all places that is doing this like experimental um, uh, like serum kind of thing. I think it's associated with like Newcastle's um, virus and there's some sort of a serum that they pull out from that that they have been treating dogs with distemper and having luck. <sighs> so I'm WhatsApping him and finally, I get on a phone call with him. Now, let me tell you something. If I get on an actual phone call with you at any point in the future, like, write it down. Because I do not talk on the phone. Hate it. But this is my puppy's life, right? So, I call the vet in Mexico so we can talk and I can get a better idea of what we're dealing with. And he said, look, there's a very tiny time window we have to get this serum into your dog because once the neurological symptoms hit, again, once it starts, you can't reverse whatever damage has been done. So you really have to get it in during that respiratory phase. And that respiratory phase can last anywhere from about four days to two weeks. And we were probably on day five, six, maybe seven at this point. So time was really running out for us. Every little twitch Selva would make, I was, having a nervous breakdown thinking that that was the start of neurological symptoms, right? Um, so I'm talking to the vet, I'm trying to figure out how we're gonna get the serum here. And it's just impossible because there's no FedEx, there's no DHL here where I am. And to get something through customs is so unbelievably difficult, especially like with an experimental drug, it would probably be hung up until like if she lived a full life, right? I'd never get it out of there. So he referred me to someone in Colombia that also had the serum. So now I'm WhatsApping this person in Colombia. They don't speak English, so I'm having to WhatsApp and do translations and all of this stuff. And we see that we're running into the same problem. They're just not going to be able to get it here in a timely manner. So we considered having Brian actually fly either to Mexico City or to, uh, I think they were in Cartagena, Colombia, um, and see if he could just pick it up and bring it back. It just wasn't feasible. Uh, so yeah, I'm having nervous breakdown again. So now I get on the Facebook groups and I'm trying to find someone in Panama that might have this serum that I've just learned about. I post and this woman named Karen sends me a private message and says, you need to contact Dog Camp Boquete. They like, they network with the vets here in Panama and they may know someone. Okay, so I contact Dog Camp Boquete and we start talking to them. All right, now as I'm talking to them about all of this and you know, time is going by, Selva is getting worse and worse over the course of the rest of this day during the night she goes from bad to really bad she coughed all night she sounded like she was drowning in her own fluid the next day she basically was not eating at all um 
we had to, I have, uh, I teach science, so I have like all these syringes and things. We started mixing up her food in uh, syringes to feed her via syringe. We were giving her water via syringe. She would not walk uh, just a little bit if we would take her out to go to the bathroom, but then that was it. She would just lay down and not move. Um, yeah. So Brian and I had a very, very hard conversation that if she was not better by the next day, we were just going to take her in and have her euthanized because we knew that her prognosis was like not even poor. It was like horrible. You know, over 80% of puppies die. She was miserable. Now she wasn't eating or drinking. And I knew that these neurological symptoms were going to kick in at any point where she was going to start having massive seizures, most likely. And here we are so far away from a vet. And I just, I didn't want her to suffer with it, you know? So we had that very hard conversation that if she was not better, we were going to take her over and just have her put down because it was going to be the best thing for her. Ugh, very, very hard conversation. We were up all night with her. Uh, she was right in bed with us, right between us. Every little cough, every little move she'd make, we were right there for her. And why is there not more video during all of this? Uh, well, for a couple of reasons. One, we were so emotional, like taking a video is the last thing we're thinking about doing when we're going through this like major traumatic thing with our little puppy. And two, I am not the person to exploit like that kind of stuff for YouTube. And I mean, I didn't even really think about it at the time, but now looking back on it, that's just not who I am. I'm not gonna exploit my dog for YouTube views. Like if my kid is sick or something, I'm not gonna exploit them and show you pictures of them in the hospital or whatever, you know, to get YouTube views. It's just, I don't know, to me it's just gross. So anyway, that's why I'm having to tell the story rather than show it to you. Okay, so here we are. We're ready to go in and put Selva down. Uh, Dog Camp Boquete gets back to me and says, Mary, we think we have a vet in Costa Rica that has the serum. Yes! Okay, Costa Rica, that's easy. I don't even need a flight. So um, they said that the vet is at the Pasacanoas border which is on the Pacific side, and obviously we're on the Caribbean side. No problem, Dog Camp Boquete, you tell me where to go, what time to be there, I will be there with bells on. Well, they get back to me, come to find out that vet did not have the serum. We're like two to three days after the diagnosis at this point. Um, oh, <laughs> and let me go back. The original vet in Bocas, when I came back and I started researching distemper, it said, obviously, you can't treat distemper, but you can treat these symptoms, especially these respiratory symptoms. So you would treat those with antibiotics. And if the neurological kicked in, you would treat that with anti-seizure meds, right? Um, the vet didn't give us antibiotics. So I had to call up and say, um, excuse me, uh, <laughs> I'm sitting here researching this. We need antibiotics. Oh, I forgot to give you antibiotics whatever. So then that ensued an entire like aggravating ordeal trying to get these antibiotics because the communication and it was not lack of language. They spoke English perfectly fine. The lack of communication and getting it whole nother video. Anyway, we ended up with the antibiotics and we have Selva on antibiotics at this point. Okay. So Dog Camp Boquete calls me the next day and says, okay, the vet in Costa Rica at the Paso Canoas border, there's another vet up near San Jose that does absolutely have the serum. <gasps> yes. Tell me where to go. I will be there with bells on. Okay, so we had this whole discussion over a couple of days, and basically Dog Camp Boquete was like the in-between. They were doing the translating for me with the veterinary in, uh, in San Jose, actually San Isidro, just outside of San Jose, uh, because at the time I didn't realize that he spoke English, and I don't think they did either. Um, so they were kind of the go-between. So we had a couple of days of back and forth of how are we going to get this serum? Can someone bring it to the border and we pick it up? 
And then the vet was like, look, the best thing for you to do is to let me bring Selva to Costa Rica and treat her with the serum here. That way I'm able to monitor her and see if she's having any reactions that we need to do something with rather than you taking the serum to the jungle, giving it to her and not having any kind of veterinary support. Yes, that made absolute perfect sense. No arguments whatsoever. All right, so now we've got to plan to get Selva to Costa Rica. And that is a whole nother story that we will talk about next week. So if you want to know all about getting Selva to Costa Rica and what happened there, please make sure you subscribe, hit notify. And if you want to talk about this adventure, I'm not going to give you any hints though in the group, but if you want to talk about this or anything else Panama related, come over to our I Go Panama Facebook group linked below and I'll be happy to talk about it. Also linked below is Dog Camp Boquete. So I'm going to stop for a little public service message right here. Please, if you have it in your heart that you care about rescue dogs, I implore you to donate to Dog Camp Boquete. We're going to talk more about it next week. Uh, I'm going to link their donation information below as well. Please, if you send the donation, put in there something about Selva so they know where it came from. Uh, all right, so that's going to be it for this week. We're going to continue and finish this story next week. See what happened in Costa Rica. See what happened after Costa Rica. Because it more adventures ensued, and then see how this whole story ended. All right, so I will see you next Friday.